Okay, this is section 8.3, and this is on dependent samples. It's called a pair t-test. And this is when you do you sample uh, people before and after. You sample the same people twice, and you're concerned about their means, their averages. So if you're concerned about averages and you sample the same people twice, you're running what's called a pair t-test. And when you sample the same people twice, that's called a dependent sample. Uh, when you do these, you'll calculate a difference, and the difference is always their x1, their first score, minus their second score, and that's called the D for difference. And then what we calculate on that is called X bar D, or some people label it D bar, meaning the average difference. Okay. Um, if sometimes you're dealing with a small sample and you're dealing with a T distribution, if so, then the degrees of freedom is N minus 1 degrees of freedom. And uh, the Excel sheet calculates that for you, and there's tables at the end if you wanted to look the things up in uh, tables. But let's go ahead and do the uh, first example here. It says, uh, the table shows the heart rates and beats per minutes of five people before exercising and after. Is there enough evidence to conclude that the heart rate increases with exercise? Summarize the most significant alpha level. Well, here's their heart rate before the exercise, and here's their heart rate, same five people, after the exercise. And then you calculate the difference. How do you do the diff difference? You take the first value, the before, and you subtract off the after. If you take 65 minus 127, you get negative 62, and you do this for each one. So we can see actually when the after score is higher, the difference is negative. Okay, you're subtracting a larger number than the before number. So this number here is a negative number telling us that we're going to be doing a left tail test. It also even if some of these turned out to be positive, we'd be doing a left tail test because we're checking to see if heart rate increases. That makes you think of a right tail test, but if the heart rate increases, that means that your heart, your after heart rate would be higher than what it was before. And when you subtract these, you get a negative number. So a lot of people end up doing the wrong tail test when they do this, but uh, we'll actually be doing a left tail test on this. Now, all you need to do is highlight this data. Well, actually go to your Excel sheet and go to the data sheet so you can highlight the data. So right here, we're pulse rate before and after. Copy that data and go to your paired t test, and that would be right. Uh, let me see, here it is your paired t test. And right here, we want to do uh, pay special as values and say OK. And we get that data in, and then we can copy. Here's your average difference the, the heart rate increased. The average increase in heart rate for these five people is 59 with a standard deviation of 3.39, and here's the number of people that you sampled. Click the Yes button, and it copies the data all over the place. And let me pause this so I can zoom up on this. Okay, we copied the data all over the place, and we're running a left tail test on this problem. And we can see that uh, the p-value is zero. It actually isn't zero. It's actually a very extremely small number, but we would be able to reject this at as low as you wanted to go on this, and we don't go below three zeros and a one. So uh, at the point triple zero one alpha level, I was able to show that your heart rate heart rate significantly increases with exercise. It's increased even though we're doing a left tail test because the increase is what caused this number here to be negative. Okay. So again, at the point triple zero one alpha level, I was able to show that your heart rate significantly increases with exercise. You might be saying, what goes here? Well, really, you don't need to do anything here. Uh, this is just checking to see if the difference is greater than zero, and that's the type, or less than zero, or significantly different than zero, and that's what you'd run here. Now, um, in some other course, maybe they might want to say, hey, did this heart rate significantly increase by uh, more than 30 beats per minute? Well, then I would actually have to put in a negative 30 in here, and now you'd be able to test that. And yeah, it actually increased by more, significantly more than 30 beats per minute. So how about 50 beats per minute? Well, it's notice I'm putting a negative 50 here, and you won't have to do this on a, on a, the, the, our, our course. We're always going to leave that blank because we're checking to see if it's significantly greater than zero. Okay, so we won't uh, have anything like that in there. So you can just delete that out. But notice it's not significantly greater than 50 beats per minute at the point uh, 001 alpha level. Uh, it would be at the point 01 alpha level. We would get a reject on that particular one. But again, we're just checking it if it's significantly greater than uh, 
any increase whatsoever, significant increase, meaning significantly more increase than no increase right there. And yeah, there is. Okay, let's go on to the next example here. And the next example is uh, coming up here, right here, to see if a diet program worked before and after, and we want to see if there was significant weight loss. Well, if there's weight loss, we would expect their after weight to be less than their before weight. That isn't true with everybody on a diet. This guy gained two pounds on the diet. But we would suspect that people would lose weight on a diet, so that way you would expect this number to be less than this number and when you subtract these two you get a positive number so we're going to be doing a right tail test let's go to the uh, data sheet and get this data and we'll highlight it and copy it here it is that's the same data we had and we'll copy it and we'll go to the uh, our pair t test and here's the pair t test and we'll just go right here right mouse click and pay special as values get that in there make sure you don't have any extra data in there we don't click the yes button don't forget to do that we're doing a right tail test so was there significant weight loss look see most people lost weight on this diet few people gained a little bit the average weight loss was 6.69 pounds with a standard deviation of 8.31 pounds we had 13 people do this and was there significant weight loss yeah there is What's the most significant alpha level? We can go clear down to the 0.01 alpha level. So at the 0.01 alpha level, I was able to show that there was significant weight loss on this program. Significant weight loss meaning what? Significantly more weight loss than nothing. Okay, was there significantly more weight loss than five pounds? Well, no, there isn't. And it wouldn't be at any alpha level that you ran at. The p-values only change on that parity test that we were back uh, on the unparity test that we were on in the last section. So you don't have to worry about these p-values changing on any other sheet. It's only the unpaired. So I know you won't get a reject the null hypothesis at the point one alpha level. But then again, we're just checking to see if there's any significant weight loss at all. And yes, there was. There was significantly weight loss, meaning that the diet did some good not much when you think about 6.69 pounds on average i guess that's good for a lot of people though so uh, we'll stop there and we'll do a couple more examples on this section on the next video